Welcome to More Than Dentistry, where your hosts Evert and Waldo discuss life, dentistry and everything in between with dentists around the world. Hello and welcome to the More Than Dentistry podcast. Good morning, Vietnam! <laughs> All right, so like it. <clears throat> Um, yo, I'm excited to interview uh, Dr. Johan Sherman today. This is more for the purposes of study group, but um, the count of whoever <laughs> wants to listen to it. Um, yeah, I think um, when we interviewed Van Echter recently or with the previous study group, um, the whole idea behind it is just for us as study group members to get to know the guys a little bit better. Um, I think we know each other's opinions about a lot of things already, um, um, but it's just good to know where does where did you start with dentistry? How do you see dentistry? And with you, I've always seen you as a guy that um, does dentistry, not really just talk about dentistry. If you you go to a lot of guys, they talk a lot about things. You know, in theory, they they sound like they know dentistry well, <clears throat> but I think what I see with you is you a hands-on type of guy um what do you think is the you, you see many guys going to course i hear guys that say have been to 10 courses on on implantology but they haven't placed an implant <coughs> what do you think are keeping them from from doing implants and how should they start getting into something that they haven't done before thanks all this uh I think it actually started when uh, just when we were still in the army days. We had a lot, a lot of time, well, not extra time, but uh, there I, for some reason, started to go to practices. I did courses, but uh, mm-hmm. to me, to go the practical road, uh, road is to go to a guy's practice and see how he places. Or mm-hmm. the, those days, uh, implants were not there even. So uh, I know I went to the periodontists and those guys to s- just phone them and ask them, can I come for a day or two? Mm. Used to go there. So uh, that's the way I learned, I think, a little bit more than just yeah. going to a course. Yeah. You spoke about Pat Joseph's <coughs> that you... That you uh, when the, yeah, the implant days, when they were very early, uh, Mark and... Howard and that uh, was it Charles or from Mosselby. I used to go to them quite often, just drive there for a day and sit in their practices. Pat, I was a few times. Mark, I think I was once, and the guy in, uh, in, in uh, Mosselby. Uh, so that was uh, just again to really go and sit and see is just to me a little bit better than being on a course. Mm. Uh, you see a lot of, um, we see it now with young dentists coming out. I think, Pete, we've had the conversation as well, you know. How uh, do they go from univers- studying university and what they've learned there to to being able to, to work in private practice, you know? How do we overbridge that gap that's there? Because I think it can, it's actually not fair to, to young dentists to put them in private practice with what they know, it's a bit of a, it's it's like a <coughs> bit of a tough time in the beginning. So, yeah. um, what advice would you have to young dentists finishing up now? What would you say would be a good first step in their in their careers? I think the two years that we had in the army <coughs> setup was a very good start for us, mm. and. Uh, as I say, my mentors were, I used to go to them. So either you're going to go to them mm. or you must go, <coughs> or the, you somehow you must get a mentor in your life, either in a practice or in some way. Because I just think everybody needs, even now at my ripe age, I still need this study group or people or whoever. And I still been saying the last few years that I want to get to Everett's place or wherever. That's mm. still a nice way to rather go to the guy's practice and see. But the young people must get into a practice where there's a mentor or two mm. that is willing to help them and eager to help them. Mm. 
No, you, you see um, the industry going through a lot of phases, and I your career <coughs> your career as well has gone probably through many phases where you have to almost reinvent the wheel. You know, you've got to see how you're going to make this interesting. What do you think gives you longevity in the industry? What makes a guy being able to practice for, what, 30, 40 years? I don't know how long the guys practice. What do you think is, is a key to, to doing that and doing it in a happy way that you enjoy the industry? Uh, I think Con started with that. He said if you get a little bit bored or a little bit depressed, you must start something new. And there's so many... Uh, uh, areas in dentistry that's very interesting and very exciting. Mm. So uh, you can pick and choose in a sense mm. where you want to go. With the last 10 years, or oh, first it was orthodontics years back, mm. but we start a little bit in, in and then the implants and the, the study group opened up uh, the sleep and the TMJ and all those things. So... <coughs> There's, uh, there's so many, you must go out there and look for the stuff to keep you a little bit interested and mm. positive. Mm. It's a challenge every time to, to go into a new area of mm. expertise, in a sense. Yeah, because initially when you do go into something new, there's a big learning curve. Yeah. And that brings a, um, on stress, you know, there's stress involved in doing something new. Um what what areas of the industry do you enjoy doing and why? <laughs> all those difficult patients. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to refer all, all of them to you from now on. <laughs> all Evers <laughs> dentures and yeah. all those kind of things is very, <laughs> I enjoy it very much. Now, <coughs> I really enjoy everything, to be honest with you. There's, uh, you actually are a little bit limited in time and whatever, toys and whatever, to do everything. But mm. uh, dentistry is a very exciting uh, area and the things are going actually a little bit too fast. But um, I enjoy everything. The whole to, to take a patient from a little bit of orthodontic work, a little bit of an implant here and look at his TMJ or whatever and in the end get a... Uh, good result, uh, result for a not specialized dentist with uh, 20 other people working on the patient in a town that's a little bit further from all the specialists. I, th I enjoy that. Mm. Satisfying. Yeah, you've always um, said that you want to be like a one-stop shop where you, you're able to, to give a, a broad spectrum of care, you know, not wanting people to just have to drive everywhere for every different procedure that they that they um, need to do, and also tackling, you know, not the things that you don't may necessarily enjoy that much, <coughs> but giving a, a broad spectrum of treatment mm -hmm. for that. If you can um, give advice in regards to what equipment, if you had to spend mo money on something new technology wise would it be on a laser on a cone beam uh CEREC machine or uh, some sort of a um, what gimmick what do you think is a is something that's not just a gimmick but something that's um, worth I worth investing in in your practice <coughs> it's difficult because mm -hmm. uh, you must have a few things of course mm. But I'll rather invest in people than in all the play to the toys. You can do with a normal X-ray mm. machine. You can do without a laser. It's nice to have it and whatever. But if you've got practical guys and practical skills, mm. I think you can go very far. You can go far with just uh, people that's got other ways of doing it. But uh, so uh, we've got all the things, mm. but uh, it's still nice to know at the back of your mind you can do it actually without those things also. Mm. Not always, but uh, you must know your limits. That's the difficult thing in the 
way to sit and to try and treat a patient mm -hmm. is to know there is definitely limits to what you can do and what you must do. Exactly. Um, uh, I think, Pete, when you were speaking earlier about, um, you know, using rubber dam and um, call it pain-free injections or what it care for the patient, you know, um, what it, it says to me, something needs to differentiate you from the next guy or something needs to make you stand out. Um, you're talking about people. Um, is that one of your focus points on um, when you're talking about uh, your practice? Um, is, is patient care or how the patient get hand handled? Is that a high priority for you, um, the patient care side of it? Our bedside manners, somehow they call it. I <coughs> used to know a guy that uh, had excellent bedside manners and uh, he didn't have the best hands and skills and the patient <coughs> just loved him. So you can get away <laughs> with very good people skills and that you can, it's, it's not so difficult to that's where you also see if you look at other people how they handle their patients and uh, approach them and treat them after the treatment and whatever there's many ways to to really look after your patient as if it's a very special patient yes. each patient must feel this is a ex dental experience and not just a dental visit if we <coughs> if you look at health and your own health um in regards to exercising, you've got a routine of exercising daily, um, or for <laughs> for most day, most part of the year, you you exercise and you take a week off in September or, or July month or whatever off. month off. Month off. Um, what role do you think that plays? Exercise, uh, firstly, and then also I know that you and your wife Ilza um, like to maybe take one trip a year and go on holiday. Um, you know, on your as a whole, you know, and your practice and what that in that means to your practice, the fact that you are healthy and that you are doing these things. What role that those holidays played in your life, um, in your marriage, and then also the exercise maybe as a um the physical uh, it's uh, the physical and mental stresses of the our profession I think is a big reality. The physical exercises that I do is just to keep, keep my, b my back straight. <laughs> so uh, core and things like that, and uh, to keep your mind a little bit onto something else. And so the healthy body concept is a must, I think, to, uh, to work for eight, nine, ten hours a day in our environment. And then all the things around it, your family life, your those holidays that uh, you must take is, uh, is part of just keeping it uh, together. Mm. Sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not easy. So uh, you must put some, some things mentally and physically in place to, uh, to keep going and mm. to make it a positive career that you uh, in and your holidays with Ilza uh, that's been of lots of value no, for your marriage and also for your mental strength uh, that's uh, one thing that I'm very glad we did we said right from the start we'll take a two week holiday every year uh, and we've done it now for since we were married a long time ago mm. <laughs> <laughs> can't remember how long, <laughs> but uh, or uh, uh, and you go overseas. You don't stay here, or you go to a place where there's no mm. coming back or no what. Because mm. here you can always get quickly involved in things again with children and whatever. Mm. So take a good break once a year. Mm. That's we said. That's one of the things we want out of dentistry and mm. uh, profession is to 
to save. Some years there were a lot, and some some years there were not enough money to go on holiday. But we still went, and it's one of those things that I'm very glad we did. Um, a lot of people are negative um, about the industry of dentistry, and um, I mean, I know of colleagues that would say he would uh, kill his son if he went and did dentistry or whatever, you know, like a very negative comment around that. Um, if somebody would say to you, a young kid would say to you now, um, they want to go and study dentistry in South Africa, what would your um, advice, comments be to, to, towards them? It's like any other profession. If you're not committed in your mind, I think it's uh, very exciting, as I've said, and there's lots of potential. I think it's just going to grow. So positive, but we all know after 30 years in the profession that there's lots of challenges. So if they're not fully committed in a sense, I would uh, not advise them to do it. But I definitely would say to those guys that wants to do it uh, that it's good. Mm. There's nothing. Mm. Just make sure you get into the right kind of practice to make it a uh, not kind of practice. Every practice is actually good enough. Mm. But you must work on being the best dentist. Mm. That, uh, that must be in the back of your mind. If you're just going to be average, you go do something else. Mm. But if you want to be the best dentist in your town or in your area, it's very nice and satisfying to, to do mm. dentistry. Mm. Um, the concept of being a happy practice, what does that mean to you to, to have <coughs> a happy practice? That's again, I think we're the study group. And we were always that uh, kind of mentality, but uh, Darby and everybody at the study group, uh, so we've, we've talked about that a lot. You've talked the last few years or months, how we, uh, the input that we must put into our building and our environment, our staff, we've done it and we're still doing it, but we must keep on doing it more and more mm. because that's where we spend our nine, eight out of ten hours mm. per day there. So uh, I enjoy that part also. It's, mm. it's unfortunately quite costly, mm. but it's nice to have a, a very nice environment. Mm. We've, we've privileged to sit in a very nice building mm. and... Uh, have nice staff and good people around us, other dentists, so uh, mm. that's good. Mm. Then lastly, um, Johan, um, what, um, as a study group, I mean, we've, we've, um, you've been here from the beginning, uh, Darby, it's been 10 years or how long? No, longer. 13. Yeah, 13. So it's been now. a while Before already. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, what what um, have you learned out of the concept of study group and where would you like study group to go in the future? And the whole thing about collective minds. Uh, I don't know, it's long years it's far ago, uh, since I've heard that or when I heard that phrase. And the whole thing about dentist at health and the study group just started opening up. I can't... I don't want to know how my life would have been without those two. Mm. Because it's an interactive, it's people that's just looking in the same direction and walking in the same direction and encouraging each other. So uh, that to me is a game changer in my whole practice and life, mm. the study group and dentists at health as a group practice. Mm. So uh, the future of study group, I just hope the young guys... Uh, see the value and the opportunity they've got here in the Eastern Cape. Mm. We're not exclusive, so we everybody can come and get involved. In a sense, and uh, as I say, I'm 30 odd years in the practice and I still learn every time. Mm. I don't want to miss a study group. 
So that's why I'm every time I'm here, I think I've missed one or two in, in these 13 years. Mm. So uh, it's, it's just positive. Mm. Oh, thank you, Johan. Um, I think as a study group, we thank you for your mentorship with all the young guys and even, like we said, everybody, we learn so much from each other in, in regards to personality types and advice about life. Um, so we also just want to thank you for that. And uh, yeah, thanks for the interview. Pleasure. Cool.